Hey everyone, how are you? In this video, we are going to solve the lead code problem of the day and the problem is set matrix zeros. The problem number is 73 and the problem category is of medium level. But I would say once you watch this video, understand the problem and understand the solution approach as well, this will be very easy for you. In this particular problem, we are given an input which is a two dimensional array and we can call it as a matrix, right? And the output we need to give is another two dimensional array which is also a matrix such that if an element in the input matrix is zero, then we need to set the entire row and entire column as zero. So I will explain you about the input and output with examples. But for now, you need to understand that you are given a two dimensional array of matrix and you need to return the same matrix. But this time you will have to change it such that if any element in the given input is zero, then you need to set the entire row and entire column at that index as zero. Now, what is the learning in this problem? We need to do it using space complexity of O of one. That is, we should not use any extra space to store any extra information. We should solve this particular problem in O of one space complexity. And we are going to do exactly the same thing. Let us try to understand the problem using some examples. So if this is your given input, this is a two dimensional matrix or two dimensional array, right? And it has three rows and three columns. This is row number zero, row number one, row number two. This is column number zero, column number one and column number two. Now the question says that if you have a zero anywhere in the input, for example, we have a zero here, right? Then you need to set the entire row and entire column at that index as zero. So the row number for this zero is one. The column number for this zero is one. So we need to set the entire column and entire row as zero. And that's what we have done. This is the final output for this given input. In this, we have set the entire row as zero and entire column as zero because we have a zero here. And this is row number one, column number one. So entire row one is zero, entire column one is zero. And that's all we need to do. Let us see another example, example number two. This is our given input and this particular array is of size three by four, three rows, four columns. This is row number zero, one, two. This is column number zero, one, two, three. Now what we need to do is we need to see where do I have zeros in the input. So I have a zero here. I have a zero here. So let us try to deal with the first zero. This is the first zero, right? This is at row number zero, column number zero. So we need to set the entire row number zero and column number zero as zero. So entire row, entire column row number zero and column number zero is zero, right? Now, what about this one? This is saying that I am at row number zero and column number three. So I have to set entire row number zero as zero, entire column number three as zero, right? So this is what we have done. Due to this zero, all these elements are zero. Due to this zero, all these elements are zero. So we have set all these elements as zero. Other elements are same, what we have in the input. And that's what we need to return. So this is the simple thing we need to do. But the main concern is we should not use any extra space. Well, you are not bound to do it, but it's a good practice if you do not use any extra space because that's the learning we need to gain from this particular problem. So let us try to see the solution approach using O of one space. Now you need to understand one thing that since any zero we have, like if we have a zero anywhere in the input, this is going to affect the entire row and entire column. For example, if we have a zero here, which is at row number zero, column number three, so it is going to affect the entire row number zero and entire row number three, right? Now from here, we can say that it is going to affect the row number zero and column number zero for sure. This is the example number one, right? Here we have a zero here, which is at index number one, that is row one and row zero. What I am saying is, this is definitely going to affect the row number zero and column number zero. Why? Because this is the row number zero, right? And this is the column number zero, right? This zero is affecting this row and this column, because if you will see the output, this is my row and this is my column. This particular element is affected and this particular element is affected. So I can say that if I have a zero here, this is going to affect the entire row and entire column due to which the row number zero and row column number zero will definitely be affected. So what I'm trying to do is if it is going to affect the row number zero and column number zero, that is the first row and first column, and we are not allowed to use any extra space, right? So we will not create any extra memory space, but what we will do is we will use the first row and first column as the extra space. That is, if this is my given input, what I'm doing is I am using the first row and the first column as the extra space. Any kind of memory, any kind of thing which I need to store, I will store in the first row and the first column. And this will allow me to get to this particular result. And we will see how. So what do we need to do is if you see any number zero in the input at any index i comma j, what we need to do is we need to set the first column at that index as zero and first row at that index as zero. Because we are using the first column and the first row as the memory as the extra space. So anytime we see any number which is zero at any index i comma j, then we will set the first column at that index as zero and the first row at that index as zero. And let us understand it with an example. This is my example. 
I have a three by three array, three rows and three columns. And this is the input. I have a zero which is here, right? This is in the input. And this zero is at row number one and column number two, right? Now the thing is, if this is, is the zero we have, then as an output, what I need to give is, I need to set the entire row as zero, entire column as zero, right? But as of now, what we are trying to do is, we will set the first column element as zero and the first row element as zero for now, okay? So we will set this as zero and this as zero. And why are we doing this? We will try to understand it. So we will set this and this as zero because of this particular zero. So what I'm trying to do is I am trying to use the first row as extra memory space, the first column as extra memory space without actually using or creating any extra memory. If this is a zero, what I will do is I will set the first column at that index as zero. If this is a zero, what's the first column in my input? This is the first column, right? At the first column at this particular index, I am trying to set the element as zero. So I will set this as zero. And the same thing, if this is my zero, what's the first row? This is the first row. And what's the index? This is the index, right? So I will set this element as zero. If I is the row and J is the column number at which we have a zero, I will say set I of zero as zero, which is this one. This is the first column. Set the zeroth row at Jth column as zero. And this will be the first row, right? So this is what we are trying to do. If we see a zero, we set the first column element as zero, first row element as zero. Now we will traverse the entire matrix and we will set each index i comma j as zero. This is a separate process we will do. We will traverse the matrix again and then we will set each index i comma j as zero if a condition is true. And what's that condition? The first element at the first row should be zero or the first element at the first column should be zero. That is earlier what we were trying to do. We were trying to set i row and zeroth column as zero and zeroth row and jth column as zero. Later on, we will just check the same condition. If we are at index i comma j, then we will check if i row and zeroth column is zero or zeroth row and jth column is zero. If any of the condition is true, I can set the i comma j as zero. And this is all what I need to do. For example, here what we are trying to do. This is a zero, right? Due to this zero, I will set the first columns at index one as zero. The first row at index two as zero because this is at index one comma two, right? This is the row and this is the column. So after converting, this will be my matrix or the two dimensional array. This is zero, this is zero. But the actual output what we need is the entire row one and entire column two should be zero, right? Because of this zero. So what we are trying to do right now is we will check for each element in our given matrix that can we set it as zero. And the condition for that will be, let us try to do it for each of the element. Can we set this as zero? We can set this as zero. If the first row is zero, the first element at the first row is zero or the first element at the first column is zero. So let me explain you the process for each element. For this element, this is at index number zero, comma zero. This is the row and this is the column. So we need to check in the first row, the first element. This is the first row and this is the first element. Is it zero? No, it is not. Fine. What about the column? Check for the first column or the zeroth index column and the first element, which is this is the first column and this is the first element. Is it zero? No, it is not, right? Okay, so we will not set this as zero. Fine. What about this one? Can I set it as zero? This is at row number zero, column number one. So check in the row zero, check in the row zero, is the first element zero? No, it is not. Check in the column one, is the first element zero? No, it is not, right? So we will not set it as zero. Now this is already zero, so let's leave it. What about this one? This is already zero, right? Now what about this one? This is at index number one, comma one. This is the row and this is the column. Now we need to check for two conditions. In the first row, this is the first row or the row with the index one. Actually, this is the first row, but this is the second row. It has an index of one, right? So we have the index of one right now. So in the index one row, do I have the first element as zero? And yes, we have, right? And if we have, we don't need to check further. We can directly set it as zero. This is already zero, right? Now, what about this one? This is at index number two comma zero. This is the row and this is the column. Now at row two or the third row with index two, do I have the first element as zero? No, I don't, right? Now, what about the column part? In the zeroth column or the first column, I can say, do I have the first element as zero? No, I don't have, right? So I will not set this as zero. Similarly, for this one, the first element at this row, the first element at the column is not zero. What about this one? This is at two comma two, the row, the column. So in the row two, that is the row with index two, do I have the first element as zero? No. What about the column? In column number two, do I have the first element as zero? And yes, I do have, right? So I can say this will be zero. So we set this as zero, this as zero, and you see this is what we need. The entire row one, the entire row column two should be zero. So this is zero and this is zero and that's what we have done. Now this is the entire thing we need to do, but there is one more catch and let me show you what. There is a confusion which might happen that how to deal for the entire first row and entire first column. And what I mean by this is, let us say this is our example. This is our two dimensional input. We have a zero here and we have a zero here. 
in the given question this is the example number two right so if this is your input then what should be the expected output due to this zero the entire column number zero and row number zero will be zero right so this will be zero and due to this zero the entire row number zero and column number three will be zero right so what is the expected output this should be zero and this should be same as what we have in the input now what will be the converted matrix see the thing is we are using the first row and the first column as the extra space right and then we will do the conversion now we have a zero here right which is at zero comma zero this is the row and this is the column so what we are going to do is we are going to set the first element at row number zero and first element at column number zero as zero which is nothing but this element only right so this will be set as zero what about this zero due to this zero which is at index number zero comma three this is the row this is the column we will set the first element at row number zero as zero which is already zero the first element at column number three as zero which is already zero right so we are actually using this and this as extra memory to see that what are the different elements we can set as zero now there is a problem now since we have set this and this as zero and if we will try to check for each element let us check for this one can i set this as zero based on the logic so yes we can set this as zero because this is at row number zero column number one so the first element at row number zero is zero so we can set this as zero and similarly for this one this is at zero comma two the first element at row number zero is zero so we can set this as zero as well so this will be zero and this will be zero and since these two elements are changed now these two elements are one and two which are changed to zero and zero which is fine that's what we need here but the problem will be if we are trying to check for this one since this is set as zero this is zero now right because we are not using any extra space to store our data this will be zero right now for this one which is at row number one column number one these are the indexes right this will also be set as zero before because this is zero so this will also be set as zero now the thing is for four this is the row this is the column for the row number one check for the first element this is the row number one the first element is zero and because of this this four will also be set as zero this five will also be set as zero because of this the two will be set as zero because of this and now for one this will be set as zero because of this and then this will be set as zero because of this and this will be set as zero because of this this will be set as zero because of this so all the elements will become zero because we have set these two as zero and due to which all the elements are becoming zero so what do we need to do see the thing is when we have the converted array ready see the converted array and we are trying to make our output do not do the processing for the first row and the first column because you are using the first row and the first column as the extra memory right so do not change the data for this one for now just do the processing for this data don't do it for first row don't do it for first column so what will happen for four you will test for four which is at index one comma one this is the row this is the column check the first element at row number one this is the row number one the first element is not zero check the first columns first element this is the first column this is the first element this is not zero so four will not be set as zero similarly for five we will check for two and three they are not zero and for two we will check for zero and three so we got a zero so we will set this two as zero and now we will process this one because we will not process any element for the first column and first row so we set this as zero which is the expected thing and then for three and one again this will not be zero because for three we will check for this and this for one we will check for two and one both are not zero for five we will check for zero and one so we got a zero here so we will set this as zero so what we did is we got this as our output we set these two elements as zero and now what we need to do is we need to do the processing for the first row and first column separately so what we are trying to do right now is process the first column and first row separately at the very beginning and this is very important before you do any kind of change in your data do the processing for first row and first column separately at the very beginning and what's the actual processing you need to do is you just need to store two variables is first row zero is first column zero and you will check for the first row and first column and if any element in the first row is zero in the given input then you set the entire first row value as zero if any element in the first column is zero you set the entire values in the first column as zeros now what i'm trying to do is here is in this particular given input before you do any processing before you try to create the transformed array what you will do is you will check in the first row do i have a zero and yes i have i have two zeros right so what i will do is i will create this variable is first row zero and set it as true so that later on i will do a processing i will set the entire row number zero as zero what i will also do is i will check for the first column if i have any element as zero all of them will be zero right what i will do is i will check for the entire column and i got a zero so i will set the first column zero variable is first column zero variable as true and then later on i will do a processing and i will set entire first column as zero now this might seem a bit complex at the first time but when you will see the solution this will be very easy to understand and once you will implement it you will understand everything about it so let me take you back to the code editor and let me show you how the solution will look like for this particular problem so this is the complete solution for this particular problem let me explain you the solution one by one 
First of all, you will find the number of rows which is the length of your matrix and the number of columns which is the length of any row of your matrix. So we can take it from matrix of 0, the length. So this is the columns. Now create two variables, frz and fcz. This is the first row 0, this is the first column 0 and make them false for now. And now check for all the values in the first row. If you found any element as 0, that is if matrix of 0, the first row and any column, so any element in the first row, if it is 0, then you set the variable frz as true. You got a 0 in the first row and break from it. And similarly, you can do it for the columns. Check each element in the first column. You will check for each element of the first column. If you got any zero, you are going to set FCZ, which is the first column zero variable as true. And you can also break from here after you set it as true. Now let us create our conversion matrix. What I will do is I will traverse in my matrix and you will see that I'm not actually traversing from the zeroth index because I don't need to do it. I just need to traverse from the first index and I will use the zeroth column and zeroth row that is the first column and first row as the extra memory. So what I'm doing is I'm doing a traverse in my matrix and then I'm checking if my current element matrix of i comma j is zero. If it is zero, set the first element at that row as zero and set the first element at that column as zero. And then we will again do the traversing in our matrix from the first index and then we will check if the matrix zero j is zero or i zero is zero. That is either the first element at that row should be zero or the first element at that column should be zero. If it is zero, you can set the current element as zero. And that's it. We have done the conversion for all the elements except the first row and first column. Now you check the condition. If you have an element in the first row as 0, that is frz variable is set as true, then you will run a loop on each column and set the first element at each column as 0, which will actually set each element in the first row as 0. And similarly, if you got any element in the first column as 0, if the variable fcz is 0, is true, then you will say for i in range of rows, that is you will traverse for each row in the first column. So this will actually set each element in the first column as 0. And that's what we have done. We have not used any extra space. And now I can return the same metric after the transformation. And when you will submit the code, you will find that this is actually a pretty efficient solution for this particular problem from the runtime perspective and the memory perspective. Both are really good. So we have solved this particular problem. And I know guys, this problem might seem complex, but try to explore the solution one by one, one step at a time, and you will understand everything about it. And once you understand everything about it, this will be a piece of cake if you get any other question, something like this. So I hope this particular video helps you to understand the problem and understand the solution as well. And if it did, then make sure that you hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed to my channel as of now, then make sure that you subscribe to the channel as well. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching this video, guys.